These are the R110 new technology test trains, the first new technology trains of New York City Transit. There was a total of 19 trains built for the A Division and the B Division of New York City Transit. We have the R110As for the RTA Division, numbered 8001 to 8010. Then we have the R110Bs. Built for the BMT IND B division, numbered 3001 to 3009. Both the R110A and R110B were built in 1992 but delivered to the Transit Authority on June 15, 1993. These cars were intended to test out various new technology features that would eventually be incorporated into the next fleet of trains. They were not intended to be production models. Also, the R110A and R110B cars are also known as contract order R130 to R131, respectively. Before I continue on with the review, here is a brief clip explaining the story behind the R110A and R110B. During the early 1990s, Kawasaki Railcar and Bombardier Transportation built both the R110A and R110B which were referred to as the new technology trains. These were to be the next generation of new technology subway cars. Based on our uh, lesson learned from the R44 to 46 where we procure new cars without testing new technology first, MTA made a very wise decision that before we buy hundreds of new cars, which were coming up in uh, the future years, we would test the technology first on two prototype trains. When it was time to buy the R62 cars, uh, the MTA formed a steering committee to come up with a design for these new cars. At the time it was decided, that based on the poor experience with the R44 and 46, we should go back to a more conventional design. And actually the technical specification for the R62 was that the R62 had to be compatible with the R36. Now the R36 were built and delivered in the early 60s. So it's like we took a, a step backwards, almost 20 years backwards in uh, technology to make it simple, more simple, and more reliable. A few of the revolutionary improvements are alternating current motors, passenger intercoms, and automatic station announcements. Even though for the most part, both the cars were upgraded with the same features, they both were very different in many ways. And as you could tell right away, the fronts were very different. The R110As had the body of the R62s, but the front looked very similar to the feature R142s. The R110Bs, however, were based off of the R68s, and instead of being 75 feet like the R68s, they were instead built to 67 feet. The strip map for the cars was also very different, as the R110As did not have LEDs on the strip map at all. And as you can tell in this picture, the LEDs are featured on all 110Bs. And they help signify what stop the train is at. Also, the door trams were very different, both from previous orders 
and in comparison to each other, but rather than explain it to you guys, I'll just let you guys take a listen. Now that we got most of the features out of the way, let's go over each car type separately. The R1s and A cars are similar to R62s but have square ends and wider 63 inch passenger entry doors. This feature was to help better the transit flow because passengers would stand in a niche instead of in front of each door. And as you can tell in this picture, the scene arrangement was changed. No more bucket seating, and there was no all longitudinal seating in these cars. And as a result, compared to the R62s, which had 440 seats, the seats were now 264, and the number of standees increased from 1,332 to 1,684. And as a result of these changes, there were various complaints from the writing public, and as a result, most of the seats were restored on later NTTs, R142s, and R142As. The traction system on R110As was AEG Adrian's AC Traction Motors Model 1501A, 150HP, 3-phase, 4-pole. In my opinion, this traction system sounds pretty unique. So, here's some clips to show you. The R110 base is on a similar to that of the R68, but just like the R110As, the ends are sort of more square and the windows use lexing glass. The R110 base uses row signs in the front, in contrast to the R110As, which use LCDs all over, and no row signs at all. The traction system for R110 base is generating electric AC traction motors, model GAB7B, 202HP, 3 phase, 4 pole. This one's also an interesting lesson, but compared to the R110A, it's sort of more silent. But here, take a listen. And as I said earlier, these trains were used to test various new features, including automated announcements. In fact, here are a few clips of said announcements. This is a Manhattan bound two train. The next stop is 174th Street. Stand clear of the closing doors. This is East Tremont Avenue. I also want to have a main goal is never visit Russia. 
Sadly, all these cars are retired today because, as I said earlier, these trains are not meant to be production models. They were meant to be test trains. I mean, it is a disappointment that I really never got to ride these in my childhood, but they did do their jobs correctly. Imagine if the R142s and R142As had major problems when they were first delivered. It would have been fucking terrible. We do not need another 1970s. And even so, we are currently experiencing the 1970s again with train service today. I mean, we can never really fully experience the 1970s, but even so, just the thought of it, with the R142s and R142As, it is a good thing that the R110s did their testing back in the day. Though they are gone from revenue service, they are definitely not forgotten, especially around the system, as most of them are saved to this day. All R110As remained out of service and on site from 2000 to 2013, and in 2013 were converted into pump cars. This is because the car bodies had many years of service left on them, so instead of sitting out of service doing done, they were instead converted into work cars. The B cars were renumbered to P1002 to P1004 and P1007 to P1009, while the A cars were left unnumbered as they were converted later on in 2017. Retirement of the R110B cars was sort of a different story, as only RT could be used for work service. On November 4th, 1996, a fire and explosion occurred on car 3006 while in service on the A train. This meant that 3007 to 3009 was taken out of service for some odd as reason to repair 3004 to 3006 and made a six car set. And this six car set was moved from the A to the C train. And of course this train was in and out of service now and then and in 2000 was permanently taken out of service sitting in the 2007th street yard. And eventually a handful of the R110Bs were moved around the city instead of just sitting in place and the 207th street yard. This includes cars 3001 and 3005 sent to the NYPD and New York State Transit and Learning Center, respectively, to be used as training cars. 3004 and 3006 are at Coney Island Yards Fireplane Facility, while 3008 is at FDY Vandals Island Facility, all as training units. 
I mean, I'm glad we have the R110Bs around still, but at the same time, not really number these, this really just fucks things over for R179s. The R110Bs kind of fuck up the numbering system for the R179s. Originally, there was going to be 50 cars in 5 car sets. Now it's about 120, I believe. Which is kind of, again, screws over the numbering system. You could have used some of the 29,000 for the 10 car sets, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. And now I right hear some of you guys saying, Oh, the r 160s form 5 car sets where you number differently, so it's not a big problem. But honestly, just have the MTA just, I don't know, keep the damn numbering consistent. Because the MTA just likes to throw around numbers a lot and just really feels out of place. But hey, that's just my opinion. I stuck with it. So with all that said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this special review. Enjoy the holidays and stay tuned for more videos in 2019.